Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Apollo 10 and a half, a space age childhood. So this is the third Richard Linkletter animated, rot rotoscope animated film, basically, after Waking Life of Scanner Darkly, and now this. And I was sort of excited for this because um, I'd heard the premise. The premise was about a kid um, who's approached by NASA because they wanted to have a test flight to go up to the moon and make sure it all worked and you could get there and come back. But the spaceship they made was too small for an adult to go in, so they needed a kid. And their um, example they use in the movie is that the uh, grown-ups were like, when he asked, how did you mess this up? And they're like, hey, look, we know you're good at math. Do you get 100% on all your tests all the time? And he was like, no. And you go, see, sometimes grown-ups mess up, so you have to go to the moon. And that's a great premise. And I think uh, that's, that's a wonderful premise. I think um, that's something I'd want to show my kids who are into space stuff. It's an exciting way to like hear about the space program through this childhood fantasy of this kid going to the moon before Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and all that. The problem with this movie is that it is not really about that at all. I mean, it is. That's part of it. But the main thing of this is a nostalgia piece. It's nostalgia for the time of 1969, or sorry, the summer of 1969, when this kid, uh, Stanley, who's, I'm pretty sure, based on Richard Linkletter, um, who wrote this and directed and produced this film, and about all the cool stuff he was doing from, like, you know, from how his mom would make ham into so many different meals for all the kids. There are, like, six kids. I just feel so bad for those parents. Oh, my God. Six kids. Whoa. Who's... I don't... I don't know how they did it back then. Having uh, all their kids like driving a flatbed truck on the highway and that was okay then and like all the games they played and how people get injured and everything worked out and the popsicles and all the TV you watch and they keep going and going and going and show you in examples. And sometimes those things come back very often they do not. It is just like, hey, things were like this back then. And that could be interesting to a point. And I was fine with that to a point and I was sort of into it. Then, as this reminiscing kept going and going and going, I looked at the marker on, you know, this is on Netflix, so halfway through, and I, where was the space, where's the kid going to space, what's going on? I thought the kid was going to space in this movie, why am I hearing about the inane details of their suburban neighborhood, and having bikes and like, you know, driving behind the, the bug spray car and how they didn't know it was bad and like the Beatles and I can't believe they had 31 flavors back then. That was such an amazing development. And they're, I'm not joking, they reminisce for sections that are longer than episodes of the fucking Wonder Years and it, it just goes too far. Honestly, there's a good movie in here and it sort of bugs me because I would show this to my kids, but I'm like, I think they may get bored because this film is like, no, is totally like plotless. And to get you in, it's kind of getting you in with a plot, which the film like kind of acknowledges. Now, I think the point of this is like, he's reminiscing and reminiscing about his fantasy he had when he was a kid of like, you know, this imagined fantasy that he didn't tell anyone out. It was probably in his head. That's my, I mean, you know, and that's what he's thinking about. And that's fine. And I will also give this movie one piece of credit for its nostalgia is I know everybody says it was a great time to be a kid when they were a kid. Like everyone says about every era. No one goes like, I don't know, the eighties kind of blue, right guys? <laughs> I mean, like, fuck that. Why do we have to be kids then? That sucked. Like no, nobody ever says that. Like everybody thinks any time they grew up was the best time to be a kid. It's fine. I, you can believe that. I don't, doesn't affect me, but I will say this. I wasn't alive in 1969, but being a kid when people, the first time man walked on the moon sounds exciting to me like i want to see that movie that sounds like an exciting time i don't care if it's like boomers or what generation it is if you were a kid when man walked on a moon in like very economically prosperous america that sounds like a pretty cool time to be a kid no joke so i i will meet him halfway there because in all of that stuff after the halfway part where you hear more about like what it was like hearing the coverage of the man on the moon while he's going through his fantasy that stuff 
very interesting and like that stuff i think is the stuff that really stuck out to me and makes me want to show this to my kids and stuff because also like most things about the man walking on the moon are super dry or more to having the adults talk they'll make it very palatable for kids they make it more for adults or for historical record which kind of stinks because that's a thing we should be getting younger generations into when i watch this film I, I, I was disappointed and let down by that. But at the same time, like, this is Richard Linklater. This is the guy who made Slacker. Should I not accept that this is the kind of thing he would do? And I think what what might be it is, um, although I've seen Richard Linklater, like, actual indie Richard Linklater films, I think most of you who watch this probably know him from, he's the guy who directed School of Rock. And I feel like this is kind of an interesting thing because... It's almost like the commercial Richard Linklater in something like School of Rock. Not saying that's a bad sellout movie or something, but it's far more commercial than like Boyhood or Waking Life or something like that. It's like that and the artistic guy tried to make a movie together and it's an it's an odd pairing. And I, I will say there's a lot I really like about this movie. Like I think about this movie. It wasn't like, hey, artistically, this is a failure. So fucking I don't care. I actually kind of want to rewatch it. And I do like, like, I've heard it compared to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Licorice Pizza, which in all fairness, I still haven't seen, unfortunately. And I think at least with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and a lot of times when you have a period piece, and it's a period piece that takes place when the director, right, the director was 12 or something, most of the time they don't make it about them being 12. And in this, it feels like Richard Linklater is very honest about what he's doing here. He's not, there's no alternative motives. He's not trying to rewrite history. He's not trying to be like, well, what if I was this and had illusions of grandeur or something? The illusions of grandeur is a childhood fantasy, like very clearly, like there's no reading into, you know, his ego or something. It's like, it was cool being a kid. It was cool having this like cool little fantasy here. Like it's him reminiscing at a, at a time that is worth reminiscing about. That is really fucking cool. I also like, like when I was a kid and like in 10 or 11, there's a lot of nostalgia for what kids took in in the late sixties. So in a way I'm, I'm sort of nostalgic for that nostalgia and it's nice to see it because I think most of the time, although I think this character would be, I hate the dumb generation names. It gets a little stupid, but I guess this you more mainly hear from people who were born in like the fifties because this character was born in 1960. Um, then you hear for kids who are little kids in the late sixties, you hear more about like people who were into the Beatles who are like more of my parents age and like were born in the early fifties and things like that. Then you hear from kids who were born at this time. So, um, you know, you could say that's gen X or what it doesn't matter, but like you, you different i'm saying those are different perspectives obviously and you you don't hear from that as much and i i do appreciate that i do think this is an interesting film i i don't think it works fully as a movie because it doesn't really i don't know part of me thinks like you as an audience want more because it's such a cool premise but it, it does feel like just someone going remember this remember this remember this remember this and like if it had all connected I feel like it's a bad marriage of the two Richard Link letters, and that's unfortunate because it is such a, a cool idea, and the things that really work about this really pop, like them going to Astro World, like the day they're waiting for them to land on the moon because they don't know when it's going to happen and the kids are bored, like th things like that are like things you remember from your childhood, so it, in a way it felt very universal and very specific which I thought was very nice. I get that people have called this a nostalgic piece. I think the thing that probably works about it is it is not trying to act like it is anything but that. It is 100% what it is. And, and I think the animation style sort of works for that because it feels a little unreal, like a fantasy, but a fantasy of your memory or Richard Linklater's memory. I also think um, a lot of the this animation reminds me of animated documentary, which is becoming more and more of a thing because you couldn't see a lot of those things. Like, what are they going to recreate them in CG? So they all feel have a little more reality to them through this like kind of obviously like rotoscope kind of more surreal animation, which is which I think is what really works about it. I I'm curious to see someone who was alive when the moon landing watch this movie and what they think about it. I might try it as a family movie night, frankly, because I think the parts about the actual moon landing are actually really cool and make it a lot more relatable and not just like all the pomp and circumstance of it. And like, you get to see like what it was like to watch TV that day, what it was, 
you know what it's like around that time and stuff and even like how popsicles were still frozen they'd cut your tongue all, all sorts of stuff but again it's been a few days i still remember this very well so i don't want to say it's a bad movie i just think it's a movie that kind of sort of doesn't work and dives too much into its nostalgia and you could say hey it's a nostalgia piece so that's a stupid thing to say but it, to me the nostalgia got too much and when i'm seeing like you're like literally it's like premise nostalgia halfway point okay we'll talk about the moon landing now like the, the it's too much too much for me i'm sorry like and i deal with every stupid generation including my own dumb nostalgia we talk about all the time whatever and I, and I get like that's what you're doing, but there's literally a part where he's like, you know what, all the great TV shows I was watching and they just like throw them out like crazy. I just, I don't know. But at the same time, it shows you the magic of moon landing. It shows you why a kid would be excited about the moon and science and what was considered, what was progress at the time technologically. And just the idea of like the fantasy of you being a kid who could go to the moon and i will say it captures this period very well it it captures those memories or it feels like it captures those memories and i think the thing you will stick with you is how authentically real these memories feel to you or felt to me even if they're not memories of my own so if you've seen apollo 10 and a half and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to Rip, 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 rip,